So I was on my Instagram uh, the other day and I posted a picture of my dog. And I'm not going to uh, say this individual's name, but I had the dog with the Balfang radio and they said she should just pay for a GMRS license and then you can talk to her as immediate family and just make sure she programs at Radio TX on Medium. And this video is meant to address the issues with that and why it brought me up to the investigation that I did here. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Transmitting on a Balfang radio without an amateur radio license, without threat to life, is absolutely illegal. There is no, if you upgrade the antenna, if you downgrade the watts, if you get a GMRS license, if you do this and that, it's legal. If you don't have the license and it's not a threat to life, it's illegal. Is the FCC going to pursue you? Probably not. Are you going to be fined? Probably not. But it's still illegal. And the issue is here that we have so many people in the, let's say, prepper community and stuff like that that tried to muddy the waters of this a bit. And when somebody asks if it's legal or if it's okay to do, they don't actually come out and tell them that it's illegal. They always try to muddy the waters and tell them to do this and this and this and then you'll be fined and it's legal. It's not legal if you don't have the license or not a threat to life. So let's go through and let me break down why it's illegal. I'm going to show you the sources and why you're causing a disservice to yourself and the communities when you say things like this. And I'm not, I don't want to be the holy ham here. I don't, I'm not going to say I do everything right and you deserve this and this and this. But when you're trying to market these things for the tactical community and you fail to let them know what the nuances is with these radios and this type of thing, you're hurting people. Because what happens is spurious emissions break out into the amateur radio band and other bands, emergency frequencies, and you never know. And you have people that buy these radios and they plug in anything they can into them and it's not responsible and it causes issues. And it stems from people having a lack of knowledge about the laws. So this particular video is going to mainly focus on a YouTuber that encompasses all of the issues that I've talked about today. And I hate to make him the punching bag, but Justin, if you're watching this, I implore you to get your amateur radio license. Uh, if you're really out for this tactical kind of thing, uh, it's going to help you uh, quite a bit to extend your communications range. And it's a great opportunity to learn about how your radios work and how you can get them to work better and be prepared for incidents in case they happen. So I implore you to get your amateur radio license. I think it's a really cool thing to do and it's, uh, it would help you out quite a bit here. On that said, we're going to review two videos of his here. And uh, one is going to be one of those videos or one of those comments saying this is legal if you do this, 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 and this. And he goes through the steps of making sure that he does everything that he can with this radio to minimize uh, issues he might cause on the radio spectrum. He still fails in some ways, and we'll explain why. But then, we're going to go back and we're going to watch a video of him transmitting at full power on his Balfang radio on the ham radio simplex frequency doing radio tests with no license. And that is the issue here. That encompasses the mentality of this and why I'm making this video. So I've done quite a bit of research and I found all types of prepper channels, different channels, detailing guides putting in these radio frequencies and people in the comments saying why it's legal and having debate over it and try to justify it and say it's legal because of this or these new rules came out or he's not using this. This video is to show you the sources, all right, uh, the FCC sources and explain why it's illegal and why it's an issue and why you should get your amateur radio license. So let's take a look at some of these sources real quick. These are from the FCC gov government website. And this isn't all of them, but this is just two examples. And so the reason that the Balfang isn't certified for GMRS and FRS is because they're not Type 95 compliant. It means there's different rules in Type 95 that these radios are not complying with. They are Part 90 compliant, which makes them available for amateur radio use. But because, and this is just a few examples, they have a uh, removable antenna because the end user can program um, the radios they're also non-compliant and because of the handheld power use so I'm going to put the links to these uh, the sources down below and um, 
you all can look at them uh, all you want. You can skim over them and kind of see what sources I'm using for this video. It's all legal. It's all documented within the FCC website. So let's go ahead and get into uh, the first video here where Justin tries to limit and tries to be responsible and put out the image he's being responsible with these radios. First thing I want to say is the thumbnail of the video says legal, how to transmit legally with the Baofeng, which is a, so that's completely wrong already. The title says operating the Baofeng UV5R almost in parentheses legally without a license. So what he's done here is he's changed the keywords of the video around so that when, when people search up how to operate legally, this will pull up. Unfortunately, Justin, there's no such thing as almost legally. Either you're committing a crime or you're not committing a crime. Whether it's a serious crime or not, that's a different matter. But let's not muddy the water spit, and let's just take a look and see what he uh, does here. Do you have a call sign or light? Is Grant to operate on this frequency? You may have heard these very same chilling words if you're watching today's video. Welcome back to Hoffman Tactical. Today we're going to go over using the Baofeng UV5Rs legally. Illegally, Justin. Using them illegally. In the U.S., we'll be and he knows this, but he's trying to uh, manipulate his viewers uh, into getting more views because people are searching for this type of thing. Using the family radio service frequencies, FRS. Oh, he's already way out of regs with the amount of watts that he's going to put out here. These frequencies uh, are on the 70 centimeter band, um, well above the ham radio band, uh, in the around, around, the, around 460 uh, two megahertz. Uh, so he has done some research here. Yeah, he knows it's not Part 95 compliant. Range and they do not require a license to operate as long as you're. They do require a license to operate. Those frequencies require a license, but the radio has the license. The radio has the license. Balfangs do not have the license for those frequencies. Remain under certain power levels. Uh, the only uh, little little kinch is that they require. Oh yeah, I uh, forgot to say uh, it's also illegal. That's the little the little quench part. A part ninety five certified radio in order to use these bands. The UV five R is not certified uh, part ninety five certified. But if you program it appropriately, like we'll show you in today's video, uh, there's no way of telling the difference from the transmitted signal. And if you act responsibly, you'll never have a problem. And all right, so there, that pretty much sums it up. There's no way to tell the difference in the signal. And if you act responsibly, then there won't be a problem. So two problems with this is uh, there's been some studies on these Baofengs, and uh, a lot of these that are being produced are not within the emission standards, the FCC guidelines for harmonics. What that means is there is a chance here that that the proper test equipment in evaluation, you think that you're just transmitting on these FRS frequencies, but you're also transmitting all over the radio spectrum. If, you, if you're curious on what I'm talking about, go look at harmonics, go look at some of the studies of the Baofengs. It's not a super bad issue, it's not insane, but some of these Baofengs are out of regulation for this, and oftentimes amateur radio operators have the test equipment and the know-how to, to check on these things. And it's much, much better than operating on a amateur radio band without a license. All right, so for, I'm not going to play the whole video. To sum it up, you just said it's much better than operating on an amateur radio band with not a license. So with the mentality of, well, this is legal and this is not legal, and the marketing of the radios like this, and nobody coming out and telling people what is legal in the comments when they ask you questions, this is what happens with these types of individuals. Here is Justin broadcasting on the amateur radio band on 70 centimeters at full power on the national simplex frequency, calling frequency for amateur radio operators with no license. At 446 megahertz, I will be using two Baofeng UV5R radios. We are at approximately 100 yards, line of sight. Good signal. Pulse of tactical reporting from half a mile behind a hill and dense woods. Pulse of 
Alright, so, it comes to my next point in this. I'm sure Justin, when he bought this radio, he was looking at the comments and he saw that it was legal to transmit on these frequencies. So he probably punched in a random frequency into his radio when he got it. And he ended up broadcasting on about 2.5 mile radius from the his two valve things on high power on the national simplex calling frequencies for amateur radio operators. Who knows with the area of these two valve things, the area that he just encompasses calling on a national simplex frequency for amateur radio operators. If there was anybody out there listening, they were probably wondering what the hell was going on and why some kid was talking on how they were talking on a, the ham radio like it was a walkie-talkie. I don't want to be the holy ham here, but this is the problem, Justin. When you muddy the waters like this and you tell people it's legal and you don't state that you need an amateur radio license and this type of thing for these radios, that comes into why GMRS, why in the guidelines it says they're not pre-programmable. It's because people that get the ham radio license, they have to study quite a bit about frequency use and all of that. That way when they get their radios, they can program the radios and use the right frequencies. If you don't have any of that knowledge and you get your own radio that you can plug in any frequency you want, that's what you do. That's what you just did in this video. You just threw in a random frequency and you didn't know what you were stepping on. That retracts everything that you said in your video before about being responsible and, and not doing this type of thing. This is the issue that I was trying to get at. And that's this issue number one. Using these radios for GMRS or FRS is an issue because you can pre-program them with other frequencies without the knowledge of what frequencies to use and how to use the radio properly. So. You may have a valve thing here with spurious emissions broadcasting all over the radio spectrum and you're punching in random frequencies and doing this and that. That's why this type of radio should be reserved for amateur radio use. Number two, FRS frequencies are meant, not meant for high power. They're, they're low power uh, frequency bands. And that's because it's the family radio service. It's meant for small communities of people, maybe within like the yards and the houses and stuff like that, maybe a little hiking. But what you've done here, if you were to transmit like this on the FRS frequencies, which I'm sure that's what you're doing, is all those people that are trying to use actual FRS frequency radios that are using them legally in their little communities around town can use all the channels they want and they don't get interfered with because other radios don't have the power of the antennas to get back and forth between them. And if they're driving and stuff like that. So when you bring out this radio and you start transmitting at full power with upgrade antennas on FRS frequencies, you're disturbing all of those individuals that are using those radios legally in those little communities. And you're talking on their channels when it just doesn't need to be done. And there's no purpose. Get an amateur radio license. That's that pretty much sums that up. So besides this type of thing where people are endorsing using them uh, illegally, you have the side that are preppers and intactable people that are still following the law. You have people that are still following the law and they buy these radios and don't get their amateur radio license, so they never use them because they're being legal about it. So my message to the prepper community that are buying these radios and throwing them in boxes is that's not going to do you any good. You can watch all the YouTube videos that you want all day about how to program the radios, how to use them, and all this. But unless you use them, you won't know if they're working right, and you won't know how they work. You have to use the type of the, you have to use these radios to understand the nuances of them, how to get the most out of them, how to test the equipment and to test the equipment. And you have to do all these things to actually make sure that if there is an emergency situation or survival, you don't just hit the push to talk and just hear a beep or something like that. It's important that you get the right radio for the job. If you're not looking to transmit on the radios unless there's an emergency, buy a legal radio that you can transmit on and practice with. 
or get your amateur radio license and get used to using that really useful tool. But this video is really made for me personally, so I can link to some individuals uh, here and there uh, that I've had back and forth with on, on why it's an issue and why it's not legal and that it is legal and to show them the sources so they can finally kind of put a, a damper to this argument here. I hope this video didn't come off as me trying to act like I'm better than people or trying to police people. Uh, it's just that I've, I've been seeing this online quite a bit and I just wanted to put, you know, I just want to put a stop to it and it, or if at least inform individuals of what they're doing instead of them just blindly thinking that like the guy on my Instagram that paid $70 for a GMRS license to transmit on a bow thing and he's still illegal. That type of thing and these type of videos are the type that promote that behavior and it's just not needed to get your amateur radio license. Uh, anyways, I know this is probably going to be a little controversial. It's not going to be the most liked video. That's fine. It can be a discussion. Let me know what you think down below. 73 to everyone, and stay safe out there.